821, welcome back to Fox 43 Morning News. Never a shortage of events these days in Washington, D.C. The House passed COVID-19 relief this week, and the next battle is already underway as it relates to a controversial voting rights bill. Joining us this morning from Capitol Hill is Congressman Dan Muser. He represents the 9th District covering Lebanon County. Congressman, good morning. Thank you for joining us. Good morning. Good to be with you. Yeah, I want to start with why you're in Washington, D.C., big picture. And we have not had the chance to speak with you since the election and everything that happened after. Uh, you were among 138 House Republicans who voted to reject Pennsylvania electors. And I want to know why you felt the right way to object to those results was to try and negate the legally cast votes of three and a half million Pennsylvanians. Well, yes. In fact, we had a certification of electors uh, on... Uh, uh, here it, uh, as a vote in uh, in Congress, and what I felt was necessary was to follow the Constitution. The Constitution states that the time, place, and manner, and the authority for uh, calling elections and deciding and election rules lies with the state legislator. We had over the course of the four six weeks prior to the election, Secretary of State uh, from the governor's office that changed the rules along the way. Uh, that said signatures didn't need to match on ballots, allowed ballot boxes to be placed anywhere. The signature is um, not matching, though. Curing, I, I, I have to interrupt ballots. you because the signature is not matching. That is something that uh, there, there was no law up to that. The, the legislature did not act on that. So that was it's technically not illegal. It's required for polling places. So in person, you needed to have a signature match. That's existed for, for decades. And it, the decision was made by them that mail-in ballots, they needed to match, by the way, for the primary, that was in June, but they no longer needed to match for the general because there were a lot of mail-in ballots that were disqualified. And listen, courts held this I, up as well. It was not well, an though. easy decision to be made. It was all about election integrity. It had absolutely nothing to do with who wins or loses, but it had to do with the accuracy of the ballot count and one citizen, one vote, and what the what the that can't continue matt i'll ask you this mm -hmm. if they have that sort of authority what would stop them from saying hey you can vote online in philadelphia because i hear it's going to rain that you, they do not have that authority it lies only with the state legislator and what i objected to was the manner that the um that the rules were changed by the secretary of state was your and election was win legitimate appropriate to do and by the way the previous three republican elections where a republican won presidential we had we had democrats object and no one said a word no one said a word nancy Pelosi, in fact, defended them, and I quoted her on the House floor. Was your so election win legitimate, sir? a lot of nonsense. It had nothing to do with overturning or disenfranchising, just following the constitutional rules as they exist. Was your, was your election win legitimate? Listen, was my election le legitimate? What matters is Biden's election was legitimate, but you cannot change the election rules, which causes inaccuracies, and that did occur. Inaccuracies did occur during the course because she had no authority, the Secretary of State, to change the rules. So, so maybe, my, maybe my vote count was off. It probably was. But, you know, on the same note, we didn't have the same sort of, I didn't have ballot boxes put all over my district like was done in, in other areas like Philadelphia and Pittsburgh. Well, that, I didn't have that was the up high to the level county, of mail-in ballots that they had. The, so count, the counties off, decided. Perhaps. You know, let's do it again, but let's do it with integrity this time. I want to move on to H.R. 1, and for people who are unaware, this is a voting rights bill named in part after the late John Lewis. It would allow nationwide automatic voter registration when you go to the DMV or other government agencies. Same-day registration. Every state would have to allow the option for mail-in voting. It is essentially designed to make voting easier. Why are you opposed to that? <laughs> well, it, it, it's, it's removing the authority, as I was just stating, of state legislators, and it's bringing it all to Washington. It also calls for taxpayer dollars being used for elections with a six to one match. So in other words, if, if, a, if, if someone running for Congress, and it's only for federal elections, by the way, uh, gets a $200 donation, they, the taxpayer, whether they are for that, that candidate or not, is in for six times that. So the taxpayer is in for $1,200. We've never before had anything like this. Um, it's, it's unbelievable. Uh, it is a big time power grab. Uh, it removes states' rights. You know, many states do have voter ID, Matt, and I don't know what your thought is, but most people 
don't really have a problem with the idea of voter ID. This removes, but it should be the state's right to institute that. This, this HR1 removes all of those rights from voter ID, allows ballot harvesting. It basically takes the rules that exist in California and applies them to the rest of the country. Uh, Washington should have no business in this. Frankly, it's uncon it's un no, it is con unconstitutional, and I, I strongly oppose it. You mentioned the ballot harvesting, I, I and, and that- for, I will fight to my last breath to assure that every citizen has an, as easy access and can vote and will vote. You, but you still have to have some sort of structure, some sort of rules. You mentioned ballot harvesting. That, for lack of a, is considered ballot collection where someone else can take a ballot uh, for you. And there are 36 states that already allow that to happen. And I realize that this would uh, take away a limit from that, but there's already 14 states that you can, more than one ballot can be returned uh, per person. So, I mean, we're not too far away from that already. Well, well, if, look, if we're going to legalize it, we're going to legalize it. But, but it's, again, Article 1, Section 4 of the Constitution says that that authority lies with the state legislator. Let the state legislator pass it, and, and then everybody plays by the same rules. Um, you know, that, that, that's okay. But we have a structural way of doing this, not, you know, Nancy Pelosi and gang seeing it a great opportunity to make a power grab. And by the way, H.R. 1 is going to pass in the House. I don't think it's going to get one Republican vote. Uh, it's using taxpayer dollars for campaigns. You know, it's all coming from, well, hold on one second. That's coming said, from the, that's coming ever from said, the Treasury. I don't think there's enough money in, in elections. The campaign you know, money that you're so referring to is coming from the Treasury, sir. That, way. that That is coming Pardon from me? criminal, that, that is coming from uh, criminal funds, uh, funds that have come from fines and crimes. Well, that's Matt, coming from Matt, the Treasury. We're, we're, you're getting a talking point from the Democrats. It, it, it is coming from penalties and fines on corporations, but that money currently goes into the general fund and is used for, 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 for taxpayers. So, so that money is now going to be removed from being utilized for our roads and, and all the other functions of taxpayer-funded government services, and it's going to be used for campaigns. So it's a loss to, the, to our revenues. We have so to get. It's a, it's, a, it's a talking point from Democrats. It's we we have alone. to we have to close on on this, and I want to get your thoughts on something close to home because this week uh, there's a big uh, push, at least now, from a Republican state senator to legalize recreation adult use marijuana. He says it's inevitable, wants to be part of the regulation process. Your thoughts as someone who, in the past, has been opposed to cannabis legalization. Well, look, uh, uh, medical marijuana. I understand. You know, everything should be done in steps. You know, government has this thing that we go from we go from A to Z. No, you got to go to B, D, B, C, D, E, and, and, and down the line. Uh, so let's see how medical marijuana works out. You know, we, we, nobody ever talks about the reports coming out of Colorado how um, uh, driving fatalities are way up, uh, re rehab is uh, needs are way up. There's been but, no evidence to connect I'm, that I'm to, fine to with marijuana. Looking at though. the data, looking at the science, doing what's in the people's interests. Uh, but let's see if medical marijuana has an appropriate place first. I mean, you know, what, what, what somebody like Lieutenant Governor Fetterman is, is, uh, seems to be advocating is, you know, people can just walk around with joints in their hands and uh, th there's no testing for, um, uh, for driving while high. I mean, you know, again, a, a, a free-for-all. That, that's, that's, that's not what I think the people of Pennsylvania want. Well, Senator Laughlin told me yesterday that, that in terms of driving, it would be the same way that you would test, uh, can, you know, test people for DUI if they're you know, on Prozac or uh, another drug. Um, you mentioned well, Lieutenant Governor Fetterman. Exist, I, and I, I he's know. running for That's Senate. I, I wanted to get you reason. out of here on this. Are you considering running for Senate or even governor next year? I am committed to public service. I want Pennsylvania to be as great as it can be for the most number of Pennsylvanians possible, if not all. I do think with the governor of Pennsylvania can in fact be the new Texas or be in the top 10 of places people want to live and expand their business and, and, and thrive and raise their children. So if I can play a role, a higher role than I am in now in one of those offices. So you're uh, considering. Particularly, governor, frankly, uh, I, I would have an interest in um, so you're, helping you're, Pennsylvania you're considering. Uh, in that manner, and serving Pennsylvania in that manner, yes. All right. Uh, Republican Dan Muser, Congressman from Lebanon County, thank you so much for joining us this morning.